Hello everyone and welcome back to the continuation of our pre-stressed to spam bridge design series. Now before I start I want to give a reminder that this bridge series is part of two series running in parallel at the moment on the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. The first video series is about the highway bridge that we started previously, which I will be linking at the top right, and we kind of did a quick detour. I wanted to explain auto structural bridge design using a simple bridge before we dive into the highway bridge. The second series is the series of the bridge itself, which I will be linking also on the top right, in which you only see the auto structural bridge design from A to Z until we reached here. So what we have done so far is we have defined our refined model, and what we are going to do in this video is we are going to create something called a line model and basically perform some analysis on the line model itself. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright, so today we are going to start doing some analysis of our line beams and I will tell you why we do this, but before I continue, I want to mention an important point, which is that I'm using Autodesk Structural Bridge Design 2025. So if you don't have 2025, you should install it, because the steps that will be done in this video are 2025 related. What are we doing so far? We have defined something called our um, refined model, in which we defined our beams and defined our slab and defined everything. It's time to start loading our structure. Now, the loading of our structure, there are two types of loading that will happen on our structure. There are something called beam loadings and something called structure loadings. Structure loadings are loadings, as the name suggests, which are being applied on the structure where the structure resists it fully. For example, the superimposed dead load, which is usually asphalt and whatnot, is resisted by the entire structure because we usually do our road works and asphalt works after the concrete has hardened in all of our construction stages. Because we construct the structure of the bridge and then finally we pave it. So the superimposed dead load, which is our wearing surface or our asphalt surface, is something that is applied on the full structure because we need to know what the share of the wearing load is going to be carried by the beam. Also, the live load is a load that is being carried by the structure, so that's something we'll be doing later. However, today, we will be talking about the loads that the beam carries, which is, for example, its own weight, the slab above it, and we also would have the shrinkage and the differential temperature gradient on the beam, because those things are applied on the beam, and those will affect the stress state of the beam, providing you, of course, with internal moments. So how do I do that? We will basically click on one of our beams and ask the software to create our line beam for us. Well, at the moment, I have only models. I could add a model, which is a line beam. But if I click on add a model and a line beam, then I would be responsible of defining the entire line beam, defining its section and whatnot. On the other hand, I could basically just click on the beam and ask it to become a line beam model. So to do this, I will go down in my refine model. And I will see here something called member details. When you click on the member details, you can see this is basically the details of every one of those beams. You can click on any one of those and it will basically scroll to the reference number and tell you what joints it is and everything is fine. I want to make a line beam of my internal beam and my external beam. So to do that, you could select all the elements that make the beam, or you could just select one of those pieces and it will understand that you want the entire beam. So I'll select one of those pieces and I'll go to something called member tasks. And in the member tasks, there is something called create line beam. This create line beam is similar to what happened when I clicked on the model and wanted to add a line beam. The bonus here is if you click on create line beam, all the lengths are being considered and the sections are also being defined. So let's try that. I click create line beam, which tells me line beam LB1 has been created. And if you go up here now, you can see, of course, I must say OK here first. And you can see now in the models that I have LB1 line beam and I have the defined model. I can toggle between the active model by clicking this combo box or I just can click with the mouse. As simple as that. You can see if you click refine model, it shows you the model. If you click line beam, it shows you a line beam. Now, line beam is a very generic name, so I right click here and ask it to be renamed, and I will call it inner line beam. Here's the thing if you click on geometry, you can see the geometry of the line beam, and you can see it took the 2142 automatically, span length 21, because that is what was defined in the defined model. If you want to check what kind of sections you have, you will have to go to structure properties. 
Now, a very important point to understand here is that, okay, let me just click OK here, is that if you click on refined model, the refined model becomes active. And if you click on structure properties, it will show you the structure properties of the refined model. If you click on inner line beam, the line beam model is active. And if you click on structure properties, it will show you the properties of the inner line beam. You, know, you will notice this behavior in the software a lot. For example, if you click on data here, you will see that if you have the line beam active, something called automated loading is available. But if you click on refine model and click on data, a different type of commands are available. Tree stress is available, influence surfaces are available, but if you click on inner line beam, there is no influence surface and tree stress is not yet defined. So you can see that based on the active model, different uh, properties are available. So if I click on refine model, and click the structure properties, you will see that you will see the diaphragm, nominal, everything. If you go back to structure definition, of course, I have an error here. I need to restart the software. OK, so we are back after this drop. If I select in a line beam and then go to structure properties, you will see only the two spans. Notice you will see the inner span. That's the only section you will see. And if you click on inner span one, you will see that he highlights for you the first span. If you click on inner span two, it will highlight the second span. So everything is done automatically for us. Now, what about the outer span? Well, it wasn't applied to this line beam because we selected the inner beams as our line beams. So we need an outer beam section or we need an outer beam line beam. I'll go to structure definition again and go to my refined model because I want to select something from it. And if I go down again to the member details, I can click on it and rinse and repeat again. This time I will select not this, this is not the external beam, by the way, because that's the nominal beam. The external beam is here or here. If you click any of those and ask it to create a line beam, it will do the same process. We are rinsing and repeating the line beam. So I click on create line beam. It will tell you line beam LB2 has been created. I click OK and say OK here. And once again, you can see line beam. Now, this is the line beam done from the outer beam. I will click on this, right click here and ask it to be renamed. And I will call this outer line beam. I will save and just to double check, I will keep my outer line beam selected and go to structure properties and I see outer north and outer north. Those are the sections we defined. You can actually toggle from here and you can see things differently. It's quite easy to use here. You don't need to go back and forth. So fine, everything seems to be okay. So I save here. Now I can go back to such a definition, but I don't want to do this. I can just select my active model. I will make sure that I have inner line beam selected because now we want to add some loads, some construction loads on the line beam. You see, allow me to explain. If you go to such a definition, of course, my software breaks down. If you go to refine model, let me remind you what we are doing. There are some loads that are being applied on the beam itself. And the analysis of those loads depend on the beam only. They don't need the full structure. And you cannot do an analysis of the full structure because of the nature of those loads. For example, the beam loads during the construction phase cannot be obtained from the analysis of the structure because during the construction stage, a lot of things are not available in the structure. And even if the slab is being cast, it might not have hard enough to be of use in the resistance. So that's why we need line beams, because we need to do our construction analysis on those things. So let's do some loads on those things. I click on inner line beam, click data, and please make sure that the inner line beam is active before you go to data, because if something else is active, then you will have different uh, context menus here. I go to automated loading, and in automated loading, we want to do some analysis or calculations on the line beam itself. The live load envelope and the deflection is not helping us because those things will happen after the full structure has um, set and everything is working as one unit. So what we want here to do is we don't want to do any live load envelope analysis. We just want to do our dead load analysis. Now notice that there is no superimposed dead load because as we said, those superimposed dead loads are going to be applied on the full structure. So I'll deselect the superimposed dead load. And also, I don't want to do any differential temperature or shrinkage. You would think, that's strange. Why would you ignore the differential uh, temperature and shrinkage analysis? Didn't you waste time explaining the shrinkage at two days or something and differential temperature profiles? I didn't waste any time. I'm not going to do this here because in stage 1A and stage 1B, you are still in the construction stage. 
So it's quite quick. You don't have to, you don't have enough days for differential temperature and shrinkage is still taking place. So in the early stages, those two things are not of concern. Now, of course, it depends on the length or time of the construction stages. So, of course, you could add them if you feel that our stages are taking way too long and shrinkage is a factor. But if it's too, if it's a short construction stage, then you can just not put them here and put them in later stages, which I will be doing myself. So you could add those two things upon your discretion. That's an engineering decision that you have to take. In construction to concrete, I will basically ask it to include differential temperature and shrinkage. So I click here and click here because during the concreting, I think that time and that enough time has been uh, used and it is worth including shrinkage and differential temperature. Fantastic. So everything seems to be fine. I need to do the analysis because the analysis will be done. So let me show you. If you click analysis, typical uh, bending mode diagrams and shear force diagrams are being created for those cases. You could even check out the results if you want. And now it's time to transfer the results to the full structure. If you click on transfer results, it will ask you where to transfer the result. So now we are transferring the results to a beam. And well, it asks you select a longitudinal or transverse beam to transfer to. So I will select this here, which means I selected one of those spans and I'll click here and call this span one construction, because those are the loads that are gonna be applied on span one during the stage of construction. So, okay, we need to import the results because we are transferring things. Now there is a lot of things you can add here, but there is something very easy. If you go here, set default mapping. If you click on that, it will fill in the default mapping as well as the factors used for the ULS and SLS. Of course, how does it know the factors? Because we are using the Euro code with UK annexes. So it's very simple. Let me repeat very quickly. We have prepared our analysis. I clicked on analyze, which has been done. And now I want to take the results and apply them on the full structure. So I click on transfer results of this analysis. And now I need to select the beam. I selected this span and I call this span one construction. And instead of me construction, and instead of me struggling each case on its own, I just click on default mappings, which added the default mappings based on the code, which is amazing. Did I finish here? No, because that span one construction, I also need span two construction. So how do I do this? Well, there is a cute plus button. A plus button will open a new tab because if you go back, that's the old tab. If you go here, that's a new tab. The new tab needs span two. So I click on span two. And once again, I will call this span two construction. With that being said, I have my span two. And now I need to basically transfer the results to span two again. So I click on this again to make this default mapping. Are we finished? Well, not yet. We need to transfer everything. So we have prepared our load transfer. I click on this and ask it to transfer everything. Transfer all sets. If you click on that, all sets are being transferred successfully. And now I close, which ends the line beam analysis of the inner line beam. I click on OK here and click again on OK, which will end the transfer of those loads. I'll save now and let's take a look to see what we have done so far. What we have done is we have created our inner line beam by uh, extracting the line beam from the refined model. And then we did some analysis on that. So. How can I see the results of this analysis? If I click on design beams, you can see that a lot of things have changed. In the design beams previously, we just had the inner span and that's it. Now in the inner span, we have the beam loads. For the outer span, we still don't have them. You could of course add them yourselves, but I will do this later. The steps are very similar and you should be able to do it yourself. Now I'm interested in seeing what new things have happened. If you click on beam definition, well, that's what we have seen before because you can define the beam and change it. If you remember, that's the beam we had. Now, the new thing is beam loads. If you click on that, you will see amazing things because now all those cases are there. If you click on beam erection, you will see the results. Let me just make this smaller. And you can see that the beam will feel its own weight. It will see its own weight in the ULS, ultimately in the state, and in the SLS. Now, construction stage 1A, you will see that the slab has been added and you can see, let me just try to make it smaller or something, but you can see the shears and ULSs for the slab span. In construction stage B, you will see that the loads kind of shifted to the right. Why did they shift to the right? Because in construction stage 1B, this has been added, the concrete here. 
So of course, you will see here more moments than the others and more shears. Differential temperature heating is, well, the internal moments from heating. And differential temperature cooling is, the, sorry, cooling, is the internal moments of cooling, and so on. So you can see that the loads on the beam, based on the beam itself, have been analyzed and have been basically moved to the beam. So yeah, I think we have done something amazing today. We have basically defined our line beam, which is an extract from our refine model, and we have to perform some analysis on the line beam based on the construction stages. We still haven't applied any asphalt load or live load, because that is something we will define on the full structure. That's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. And with that being said, I want to give a line beam sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on. Especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.